and welcome to another treatment of the International Sunday School Lesson. Today's lesson is entitled, Faith in Times of Trouble. And it's taken from the book of Daniel, the sixth chapter. We're going to skip around in some of the verses in there. And it's for February the 18th, 2024, Winter Quarter, Lesson number 12. Now, some background information. We know that Daniel had risen to a very high prominent place in both the uh, Babylonian and also the Medes and Persian Empire. And the first ruler was Darius, and Darius had set up a hierarchy of rulers, and he had like governors, and then he had a group of three people who were overseeing them, and that he was going to select one of those to be above everyone. And it was real obvious to everyone who was in the know that Daniel was going to be the one who was going to be over all the rest of them. And they were very jealous. The other rulers were very jealous of Daniel. So they began to conspire against Daniel. And they figured out that the only way they could uh, trap Daniel would be by a issue with his belief in God and his worship of God. And they were going to trap Daniel uh, by his belief in God because they talked Darius into issuing a command that you could only make a pleading to one person or one entity in the entire kingdom for a period of about 30 days, and that would be to Darius. And they knew that Daniel prayed to his God three times a day. And it's also important for us to understand that the law of the Medes and Persians was such that once it, something was converted into a law, it could not be repealed even by the ruler. Once it was put in law, it was beyond revoke. And so they talked Darius into issuing this law to where you could only make a pleading to him for a period of time. And they knew that that would trap Daniel. Uh, that would trap Daniel. So Daniel went ahead and, and did his prayer and it triggered um, the penalty, which was to be thrown into the lion's den. Now, I want to refer everyone who is interested in about exactly who Darius was. Uh, there's a, been a lot of debate over this, whether or not Darius actually existed and what have you. Uh, I happen to be of the persuasion that Darius did exist because, the, first off, the Bible says it. And the other thing is that a high number of very prominent scholars who agree that Darius existed. And if you go to my website, I've got a link uh, discussing that and a link that goes to a good um, theological journal article on the subject, and that Darius actually, uh, in a lot of circles, was referred to as Syriaxis II, and, um, and like I said, there were a lot of people who, a lot of good scholars who agree that Darius did exist. Okay. And Daniel, the sixth chapter, verses 10 and 11. When Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he went to his house where he had 
windows in his upper chamber open toward Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as he had done previously. Then these men came by agreement and found Daniel making petition and plea before his God. So we see here how that Daniel was a man of prayer, and for th- and three times a day he would always pray, and that um, the law had already been signed into effect, and so they had him, and they caught him because they knew that he was going to continue to make his prayer and supplication to God Almighty. Okay, Daniel 6 and 14. Then the king, when he heard these words, was much distressed and set his mind to deliver Daniel. And he labored until the sun went down to rescue him. Now we see here how that Darius realized that he had been trapped into this and that it was going to trigger Daniel being thrown into the den of lions. And we see how that Darius tried very very aggressively to get out of throwing Daniel in the lion's den. But that was not the case. It was going to be because the law of the Medes and Persians was irrevocable. It meant that Daniel was definitely going to be thrown into the lion's den. Daniel 6 and 16, Then the king commanded, and Daniel was brought and cast into the den of lions, and the king declared to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve continually, deliver you. So we see here that how that the king in his well-wishing actually really did want Daniel to survive. And it bothered, it troubled the king, and he was heartbroken, but he did it anyway. And he was giving Daniel some well-wishing. May God deliver you. Okay? Now, Daniel 6, 19 through 23. Then at break of day, when the king arose and went into haste, went in haste to the den of lions, he came near to the den where Daniel was. He cried with a tone of anguish. The king declared to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said unto the king, O king, live forever. May God, my God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth, and they have not harmed me because I was found blameless before him. And also before you, O king, I have done no harm. Then the king was exceedingly glad and commanded that Daniel be taken up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no kind of harm was found on him because he had trusted in his God. So we see here how that Daniel, he had been faithful to God and the king out of necessity because he couldn't get out of it threw Daniel into the den of lions. And the Lord sent his angel down there and kept the lions calm where the lions would not have, would not attack Daniel. And Daniel was at peace in that night with the lions. Between the king and Daniel, there was only one of them who had a restless night. And that was the king, because the king did not have faith faith that Daniel would be delivered. But Daniel had faith, and there he was. He had seen, Daniel had seen all these miracles up to this point. He had seen his, uh, three friends thrown into a fiery furnace that was so hot that the People who threw them in died of heat in the intense heat. He had seen that kind of deliverance. 
He had seen the mighty Babylonian empire completely destroyed. And one night, when the hand wrote on the wall, meeny, meeny, tickle, you farson, you've been found in the balances and found wanting. He had seen all of this. So when Daniel was thrown into the den of lions, he was at peace because he knew God had promised him down deep in his heart that he was going to be all right. Now, there are some times that we are being persecuted where we actually are going to suffer. We're not delivered out of the persecution and out of the danger every single time. Sometimes the danger in the persecution actually goes through. Sometimes uh, Christians are beheaded. Sometimes Christians are crucified. Sometimes Christians are killed when they're being stoned. But Daniel had the promise of God this time he was going to survive. And that's exactly what happened. In Daniel six twenty six and 27, this is what King Darius said. I make a decree that in all my royal dominion, people are to tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God, enduring forever. His kingdom shall never be destroyed, and his dominion shall be to the end. He delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders in heavens, in heaven and on earth. He who has saved Daniel from the power of the lions. Now, in other verses in this chapter, we find that the people who conspired against Daniel and set the king up for this, they were then thrown into the lion's den, and they were immediately killed by the lions. So, we see the contrast between the unbelievers and Daniel, between those who were seeking ill and Daniel. And friends, we need to be faithful. We need to be faithful with everything in us. We need to be a praying people. Okay? Now, in conclusion, number one, put your faith and trust in God. Number two, sometimes Sometimes you suffer at the hands of the persecutors, but other times you are delivered. Number three, sometimes when you go to do evil to people, it'll come back and bite you. And that's exactly what happened to those people that were conspiring against Daniel they had what they had intended to happen to Daniel actually happened to them. Well, friends, good Lord willing, I'll be back with you next weekend.